So I'm going to go over some of the acute complications that can happen with diabetes. Before I start, I do want to say that if you have a plan already worked out with your veterinarian, that's what you should follow. What I'm going to go over is meant to help you if you don't have a plan, you forget the plan, or this is your first time hearing about this and you realize you need to go get a plan. All right, so the two things that I'm going to review are first, hyperglycemia or a high blood sugar, and then second, hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar. So for hyperglycemia, or what we call a high blood sugar, this happens when there's not enough insulin in the body or too much food in the body. Symptoms of this include your dog looking very, very tired or sleepy, not wanting to be as active as they usually are, and then also drinking and peeing a lot. So maybe having some accidents overnight, needing to go out more during the day, drinking lots of bowls of water when they typically don't do that. This is usually what you see with a high blood sugar. It could be a couple other things medically that isn't related to the blood sugar. So if you do see this and it's lasting longer than you expect it to, you might want to go talk to your veterinarian just to make sure that it is a blood sugar problem. So with Stillwell, common times that this happens is when he eats and I forgot to give him his insulin. That doesn't happen very often, but it has happened and it might happen again in the future, unfortunately. The second and most common time I see this though is when Stillwell eats his food, he gets his insulin, but then he gets more food from somewhere else that I wasn't counting on. So someone comes over and feeds them half their plate of dinner before I catch it. Food falls on the floor and he grabs it up before I can get it from him. There's food laying it open in the pantry. He gets into a bag of food and he's eating it before I can get to him. Those are all ways that a blood sugar can go high on you. If this happens, you probably don't have a lot of options to bring the blood sugar down immediately. So two things that I always do with Stillwell. One, I make sure that there's lots of water out. The body is very, very thirsty when it has a high blood sugar, so I know he's gonna wanna drink. The second thing is that I get him as active as I can because in both humans and animals, being more active helps your blood sugar get back to normal faster. So if you're seeing a high blood sugar happen every once in a while, probably not a big deal. However, if you're seeing it happen over and over and over again, you might want to look around your house to make sure there's not extra food the dog is getting into. And then if you don't find anything, you might want to go talk to your veterinarian to make sure that the right amount of insulin is being given when you do give your dog the prescribed dog food. So the second complication I'm going to go over is hypoglycemia or a low blood sugar. This one's a little bit more urgent and puts the body in a very stressed situation. So this happens when there's too much insulin or not enough food given to your pet. Symptoms of this include your dog being very, very sleepy and tired, but then also they look very confused. So with Stillwell, this has happened a couple times. And for him, what he did was he started roaming around the room in kind of a pattern that didn't make sense. He stared at the wall for a while. He would jump on my lap, get very, very nervous and anxious and act like something was wrong. And when I saw that, it looked like he was stressed. So that's usually what the body looks like once it has a low blood sugar. Common times that I see this happen with Stillwell is usually when he gets sick and I didn't know he was getting sick. So for example, I give him his food, he eats it, and he gets his insulin. He goes outside, he messes and stuff in the yard, comes in, throws up all of his food. So in that situation, I can't get the insulin out of his body, and he just threw up all the sugar that he put in his body. So in essence, he has too much insulin and not enough sugar in his body. So there's a couple things you can do for this. The first one is, if he really did throw up all of his food, I try to see if he'll eat another meal for me. Because if it was just a little sickness that really he's not sick sick, he just messed in something, sometimes he'll eat a whole other meal for me and then I know I'm covered. If he won't eat a full meal for me, then I have to give him extra food that does have sugar in it. In a minute, I'm gonna walk you through what kinds of foods are best for dogs when they're having a very low blood sugar. However, if you wanna ask your veterinarian about common ways of treating a low blood sugar, that would be a great question to ask him or her at your next visit. 
So remember, these complications are going to happen. They're probably going to happen more than once, and there's no reason you should ever beat yourself up for them. The best thing to do is to be prepared and have a plan so that you're comfortable when they happen treating them and your dog stays safe. Thanks for watching. If you want more information on dog diabetes or the printable recipes and worksheets that accompany the videos, then be sure to check out shuggypups.com. Take care. Mm -hmm.